And when we talk about civil rights, let me become a little bit personal. As some of you may know, I spent four years of my life here in Chicago. In the early 60s, as a 20-year-old transfer student to the University of Chicago. Now, I said this before, and I'll, I'll say it again, that my four years here in Chicago was an extraordinary moment in my life and very much shaped my worldview and what I wanted to do. I should also say that while the University of Chicago was and is an excellent school, the truth is that I learned a lot more off campus than in my classrooms. Now that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go to your classes. As someone who came from a working class family that didn't have a lot of money, Chicago provided me for the first time in my life the opportunity to put two and two together in understanding how the real world worked, to understand what power was about in this country and who the people were who had that power. Those years enabled me to understand a little bit about how wars get started, to learn about racism and poverty and other social ills. My years here in Chicago gave me the opportunity to become involved in the civil rights movement, in the labor movement, in the peace movement, and in electoral politics. So thank you, Chicago, for that opportunity. As a student at the University of Chicago in the early 60s, I became involved with a civil rights organization called the Congress on Racial Equality Corps, which was one, which was one of the leading civil rights groups of that period. Now, some of you may not know this, but in the early 1960s, the University of Chicago owned segregated housing. Being audacious young people, black and white, our chapter of CORE wanted to expose the racist housing system run by the university. And so our core chapter did something pretty interesting. We sent white couples and black couples into the university-owned housing to pretend that they were looking for an apartment. And you can guess what happened. When the black couples showed up, just, there were just no apartments available. Sorry about that, there's nothing available for you. But a few hours later, when one of our white couples went in to look for an apartment, somehow, mysteriously, they found a choice of apartments. After documenting that clear pattern of racial discrimination, the students in CORE demanded that the university desegregate its housing. When they refused, we staged one of the first ever civil rights sit-ins in the North. What we were doing here in Chicago at that time was significant, but it came nowhere close to what young people our age were doing in the South in groups like SNCC 
the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. We were protesting. They were putting their lives on the line, and some of them, in fact, were murdered. In 1963, I, along with a busload of other students from Chicago, took a 600-mile ride to Washington, D.C. for what remains, in my mind, an unforgettable day. We went to the nation's capital to participate in the March on Washington for jobs and freedom. led by one of the great leaders in American history, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. I had the honor of being there to hear him deliver his now famous I Have a Dream speech, and that was a day I have never forgotten. But returning home to Chicago, we knew that we had a lot more work to do. At that time, it was nine years, it had been nine years since the Brown versus Board of Education decision, Supreme Court decision, that desegregated schools in America. But the school officials here in Chicago at that time had still refused to meaningfully desegregate the city's public schools. Black schools were overcrowded and underfunded, with many students forced to share chairs and desks. Meanwhile, a report at that time found over 380 white classrooms were completely empty. But instead of putting black children in those empty classrooms, the school officials decided to put old trailers. You know what old trailers look like? Put old trailers on the black school grounds. And those trailers were called Willis Wagons after the Chicago school superintendent of that time, Mr. Benjamin Willis. Those trailers were a monstrosity. Students would boil in the heat and freeze in the cold. They were infested with rats. They were an insult and a disgrace. And the community fought back. One day, many of us went to the spot where they were planning to put the trailers. We were corralled by the police and told not to cross a line. Well, some of us did cross that line. And, of course, we were arrested. And we spent that night in jail until we were bailed out in the morning by the NAACP. Now, the reason, the reason I tell you all of this is because my activities here in Chicago taught me a very important lesson that I have never forgotten. And that is that whether it is the struggle against corporate greed against racism, sexism, homophobia, environmental devastation, or war and militarism. Real change never takes place from the top on down. It always takes place from the bottom on up.
Have we made progress in civil rights in this country since the early 1960s when I lived here in Chicago? And the answer is yes, we have. But do we still have a very, very long way to go to end the institutional racism which permeates almost every aspect of our society? And the answer is absolutely.